So it's a pleasure joining us to our many viewers with this uh, joint interview, AFP, uh, Cable TV, ELBC State Radio, and LM TV, respectively. We're privileged to have with us uh, Bishop Dr. Lee M. Sampson. So welcome to the media. Thank you so very much. Early this morning, coming to our neck of the wood, the Hayward Mission Institute. You're so welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure of uh, meeting you, especially your own contribution to the country. We are in the crisis, Corona virus. Since March 16, Liberia is part of the Committee of Nations. First, I'd like to know uh, from your end, your observation since the crisis started. How is it like so far? Well, um, speaking from where I sit, and speaking as one who is within the midst of what's going on, the government uh, has announced stimulus package, which uh, we stay await. Uh, you have the Joint Security, they're trying to keep people apart and to do the right thing to wear their gadgets. And uh, so far, moving in the right direction, but very slow. Uh, and the cases keep going up, which is concerning. Uh, with all of the things that we are told to do, uh, we're doing them, but yet and still, the cases continue to go up, so it's concerning. I would think that there is much, much, much more uh, to be done, whether the government and those opinion makers will have the capital uh, to invest uh, in order that we may be able to turn the corner on this virus remains to be seen. So we continue to pray. Are you wearing two jackets uh, from the educational perspective and also from the religious end? And earlier you talked about the slow pace in which uh, decision makers are making some uh, initiatives or engagements. What could be your recommendation for that slow pace to be a little bit faster? Well, my recommendation, uh, and this thing started as far back as December. Uh, when it's starting somewhere in China, the people started making the noise. Fast forward now until we got into the ending power of February, somewhere in March, uh, when the state of emergency was reluctantly, I guess, finally declared. Uh, so I was thinking, where were the technocrats and all of these men and women who are supposed to be in the know. Mm -hmm. You see the storm coming, and we did not begin to, uh, like the Bible say, if you're going to build a house in time of crisis, you have to count the cost. Uh, but uh, we sat down as they were on our hands until we were cut. Even though it was three at a time, the state of emergency was declared. But by that time, if this is asymmetrical, you don't know who in the country, how many persons in the country were already infected, mm -hmm. distributing the virus. So it was a slow start, late start, like they did in the United States of America with Donald Trump. So the same thing was here in Liberia. Mm. Tell me, yes, Tommy, um, now that the coronavirus is globally disruptive, um, when you look at you know, the impact what comes to mind? What do you think about? What do you think world leaders need to do? Well, uh, quite frankly, young man, uh, <coughs> this is beyond. <laughs> it's beyond the capacity, so to speak, uh, comparatively speaking, beyond the capacity of world leader, beyond the capacity of your renowned scientists and the learned men and women in the field of medicine. And we must applaud them, the nurses, those that are on the front line, uh, trying to make sure that those individuals who are infected are giving the attention they deserve and keeping us from getting infected. That said, this is not anything new. The worst is yet to come, and I'm sure you don't want to hear that. From where I say from the religious perspective, from the biblical perspective, in the 24th chapter of the book of St. Matthew, it talks about 
uh, in the last day, Jesus was telling this, his disciples, before I come, you will hear about war and rumors of war. There will be earthquake, there will be famine in diverse places and pestilences. So the coronavirus, or see you, uh, COVID-19, is one of those pestilences that Jesus predicted in the 24th chapter of the book of St. Matthew. So the worst is yet to come. This is just like a dress rehearsal. Now, you and I know very well, great nation, uh, the superpower, the United States of America, uh, Russia, China, and all those people that got the money and got the manpower, got the brain, got the technology, there's nothing that they can do. Invisible little virus has just brought the entire world, governments of the world, educated, uneducated, worthy government, poor government, all of us just brought the entire world to a halt on its knees. This is just a dress rehearsal, as I have said. The worst is yet to come. That sounds panicky. Well, uh, it, it, it sounds panicky, but the Bible is on key. And the most disappointing part I have something that I didn't think we were going to rerun this, an humble appeal to the Liberian government to reopen the churches. Now, some people have a different view on that. Uh, in the midst of a crisis, as we have, uh, I, I was here in the 1990 war, churches were not closed, even though people were saying, you hear the shooting, you know which way the bullet coming from, the gun coming from, so you run in the opposite direction. Unlike this virus, uh, they say unlike the Ebola. Uh, but be that as it may, Ebola, they were praying right in the fish market. Those women dedicatedly pray every day, rain or shine, they were there, beseeching God on behalf of this country. So uh, uh, we were taking a bike when some of the uh, big religious leaders in this country, reputed religious leader in this country, were the first to jump to close the doors of their churches. Then the World Council of Churches, which is an amalgamation of all of the uh, churches uh, that are now in Liberia, but throughout the world, the World Council of Churches, Liberia is a brainchild of the World Council of Churches. So now, they jumped the bandwagon. I would have thought that those men of God who have given guardians to the government, Yes, we understand. Yes, we have to do the social distancing. But it is prudent, it is very important that we keep the doors of the churches open. And whatever we want to do, for instance, you said those going to the market, you have to distance yourself. You're keeping the markets open. You're keeping the gas stations open. You're keeping the supermarkets open. You're keeping the hotel open. You're keeping guest houses open, you name it. But then when it comes to the church, which is a spiritual nerve center, which is a city of refuge, where we should run in time of trouble, you close the door. You say you can't go there. Are we saying then that only the Christians, if they congregate, have the propensity to spread this virus? I would think not. Then it would have been that, okay, you go to your church. If you got 500 members, okay, you take about 50 members in the church, you do the social distancing, and whatever you do corporately, you pray to God so God can intervene on our behalf. I would have thought that would have been the mandate. I would have thought that a religious leader could have prevailed on the government that just as you're doing for the market people, let's go to church, we'll keep our distances. If I have 100, maybe five will come. We'll go there, we'll pray. We may not have worship, said, but there is power in corporate worship. And the scripture says that when the people of God come together, when we come together, when we unite our faith, when we unite our belief, and with one voice, lift, our, lift up our voices to God and cry out to him, he said he will hear us and he will heal our land, but the churches are closed and they're telling us to pray at home. This is the reason why you have 
the radio waves now have been conglomerated and saturated and polluted with all kinds of voices and messages. This morning I was listening to a lady, and there were about eight visions and prophecy, lies from hell, about the president of the Republic of Liberia. They saw him naked, they saw him in short trousers. I mean, just, oh my goodness. And people are listening to this and believing this stuff here. Even if that were the case, that should not be on national radio for the consumption of people that might not be able to rightly divide the word of truth, will believe this and run with it, it's wrong. So I'm appealing to the president, my brother and friend, my fellow Liberian, that even though it might be scary, that the churches are closed. I think it's 141 confirmed cases. Churches closed, 141. So what will hurt us? Let's reopen the churches. Then let those churches observe all of the protocols that are laid down by the Minister of Health, and those that will not do so, then they should be held accountable. But to close the churches in this country that is purported to have been founded on Christian principle, why is that? Because the Constitution, the organic law, was signed in Providence Baptist Church at that time, July 26, 1847. I think if my memory serves me right, they signed that piece of paper. Then we are told that Liberia is a Christian country because we signed a piece of paper in the church. Why is that church closed then? What are we telling God? We just closed the door on God. So uh, to Christians, uh, do the are home praying, any recommendation to them, any uh, appeal as they follow the social distancing or the health protocols? Well, let them continue to pray at home, but that is not going to cut the cake. Uh, I'm, I'm appealing to the government. We're going to rerun re this article for tomorrow. I'm appealing to the government to see reason. The markets are open. You go to the market. Social distancing is not really holding. It's just God that's helping us in this country. Go to the banks. Go to the gas stations. Let's be for real in this country. You cannot close the church doors down and tell those that are believing and this if it is a Christian nation, who are we supposed to run to? We are supposed to run to God. Yeah. Sanitizing, if God does not agree, forget it. Yes, you can wear a mask by all means, but if God does not agree, forget it. We can keep our social distancing. Six feet, give me six feet. You can wear your PPC, whatever they call it. If God does not Arguing, sorry, Robert, that the church is, 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 is just a structure and uh, people should pray at home because whenever you are two or three are gathered, he's there. He, he doesn't mean you have to get to the structure before God can listen to you or whatever appeal that you may have. Thank, okay. you, for, thank you for your education. You wouldn't, be in a, you, wouldn't be, you wouldn't be wrong. The church, I agree with you, is not the building. Wonderful. The market is not the building. Okay? Sure. The gas station is not the building. Okay? okay? It's not the building. So why do we why will we then say that? Because I understand that. The 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 the, 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 the building, the building that they call check that all over the world people are spending millions of dollars, even here in this country. You got a structure that I put up, spend millions of dollars on it for the people of God that believe in God, who are the members, visible members of the invisible church. They gather together in that place on one accord to worship God. It is vital, it is imperative, it is important for us to congregate. We should not hide behind the world two or three again. It is vitally important that as a people of God, we gather together, we congregate. There is a place for corporate prayer. There is a place for one or two prayer. There is a place for individual prayer. But we need to gather together to pray. And if they can do it for the market, why the church? Well, my last question before we go to the education aspect of it. Um, 
Liberia's response to COVID-19 is not different from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And these responses are coordinated by the World Health Organization. If you say Liberia should open churches, uh, it means that Liberia will be doing things differently because almost all of the countries to, uh, around the world have closed you know, uh, churches. You know? So do you want Liberia to do something different? Uh, young man, young man, who are you going to take your marching order from? Did you show? They do so, uh, as much as I respect them, they're a human organization. There are churches in America, other places, that are going to church. In fact, they sued the government. Some states have sued the government of the United States that that's an infringement upon their freedom to worship. And those people are going to church. They are congregating. Okay, my question to you, if I were to ask you a question, why is it only the church? Why would the market people gather and the church people? What's the difference between the market people and the church people? Are the church people susceptible? Are they the carrier of this disease? Unlike those congregating in the market right now? Let's be for real. We cannot take God out of the variable. God should be in the center of this disease as it was in Ebola, as it was during the 1990 war. But you're 100% right. We're taking our marching order from WHO. And you know what is happening? We are getting ready for the one world government. There is going to be a one world government. And this is a dress rehearsal. We are getting ready for a one world church. And this is a dress rehearsal. This is the reason why now all of the ch churches are on radio and preaching. The, you mark my word. You'll live to see it. The day will come. There will be one check. What, what we are dying for, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. To the educational side, so I want to say if your, your appeal by the government is accepted that churches be open, then people from the educational background will say, let us uh, open schools as well. Well, uh, there's a difference between that, my young man, and your learner man. I'm sure you probably uh, college graduate, and uh, I can say you look smart. And I can see your lips and your nose. Um, no, that will, I'm not saying that because you open churches and they observe the health protocol that we should extend the same to the school because, for instance, like Haywood Mission, we have about 1,000 students. I would be crazy to tell government to let 1,000 young people come here and be in these classes. So we've already... Uh, taking plan to address that issue because our students are not here physically. We are addressing the issue for them. So the church is very vital. You can't compare the church to the school. Without the church, there will be no school. Without the church, there will be no government. Without the church, there will be no Liberia. And we're playing with God in this country this time around. So you say Uh, um, uh, okay, uh, let them tell me one package from over there. Let me show it to you guys. Uh, what we did, uh, uh, because here, um, Ministry of Education, uh, usually they, they, they're very uh, reactive. We're not proactive. We see the fire coming and we sit down and, get, and don't go get water uh, to get prepared. So when we saw this coming in, I was listening to the news. I met with my staff member. I said, just in case, the government will come and say, no school. And they did. <laughs> Out of a clear blue sky, because of so, 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 no school, which was right. OK, so we fell in line. So what we did was I brought my staff member and my teachers together and told them that we are going to produce we are going to produce study notes. I hold a copy in my hand. We'll produce study notes for each one of our 1,000 plus students in all of the subjects. The teachers will bring the study note, the computer may will computerize it, somebody will proofread it, and you'll do the question on your study note. Each student will show up at the school, pick up the package, take it home, study it, answer the question, and bring your answer question back to us. They have done that now. 
So we are through with the face marking period. We are getting ready for the six marking period. And if school does not reopen, trust me, we will be doing our final examination, putting stuff into the hands of the, of the, of the children for them to study. It is not by radio. Uh, we're putting something in their hand. Hopefully, they'll do it by themselves. They're not going to do it, give it to the parents or somebody not going to do it for them. You're not going to help them to do the homework for them. They'll really sit down, study it, learn something on their own. Bishop, let's wrap up quickly. Any parting comments? Uh, all right, my wife is here. Let her come tell her hello. Dr. Simpson, come on. Come on, Dr. Simpson. Come this way. Come this way, Dr. Simpson. Can't tell uh, ELTV. Tell you what. Uh, talk to him. This is Dr. Mara yeah, Simpson. I'm still here in the country. The planes are leaving me behind <laughs> because I'm trying to help my husband to close out this school year. I've been in Liberia for 42 years, and this is my home. When I look to America, it's not good. When you look to Europe, it's not good. And God has kept me through the wars, Ebola, and I know he will prove faithful now. Amen. So God is wonderful, and it's a good day for the church. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you'll make sure you play that. I beg you. Cut me up and play her. Don't cut me. Don't Thank you. Me.